and welcome to another unboxing video. I'm Sergio with Mobility Scooters Direct and today we're unboxing a Pride Viva Lift. This is model number PLR935. It's a medium lift chair. All you're going to need is a pair of scissors or a box cutter to open up the box carefully. There's some tape along the top. Simply unfold the four lids across the top. You'll see a little piece of cardboard along the top and the user manual. Make sure to Hold on to the user manual and read through the contents entirely. The first thing you're going to want to do when you open up the box is figure out where the bottom side of the chair is. You're going to be able to identify where the bottom of the chair is by looking for the feet or the leg rests. Again, the user manual is very important. All the instructions will be found in there. But to get started with the unboxing process, again, locate the feet. You're going to see a black bar and that's where the feet or the bottom side of the chair is. That's important because you're going to want to flip the box over so that the chair is sitting upright on its feet. This is especially going to be helpful if you're just one person doing this job so that you can slide the lift chair out of the box forward as the box is open and the chair is already on its feet. So the trick here is to put one foot on the bottom of the box so that it doesn't slide forward. As you can see, Andrew's got his left foot on the bottom part of the box and he's sliding the chair out so that the box doesn't slide forward with it. Uh, that's why his foot's on the bottom part of the box there. You can rotate it or spin it out and then go ahead and just make some room to unbox the, the product entirely. There's going to be some styrofoam sheeting wrapped around the entire unit. Simply rip that off or slide it off. Go ahead and put that to the side. We do recommend holding on to the box and all of the shipping uh, packaging material that comes with it for at least five days in case you want to return your product. Uh, the top half of the chair is not connected. It will come wrapped up, resting right on top of the base of the chair. Now you're going to want to go ahead and carefully remove that. There are some uh, pieces of hardware attached to the chair that can scratch your fabric, so just be careful as you're working with the top part of the chair and unwrapping it. What you're going to want to do is position it how Andrew has it here. You're going to want the actual fabric facing down and resting on top of the chair. You can go ahead and remove the wrapped up sidearm pieces and then begin to try and locate the hardware bag which is zip tied to the bottom of the chair. You can lift the chair up and have somebody tilt it forward to you for you if you have assistance or just grab a pair of wire cutters, find that zip tie and rip it out. There's actually two zip ties holding the hardware bag. So just find a way to carefully cut those zip ties so that you can remove the hardware bag. Inside of the hardware bag, you're going to find the remote control. There's three connectors. One of them is for the remote control. The black one is. And then you're going to find a yellow and gray connector. So let's get started by getting the remote control out of the bag first. And we're going to show you how to connect the remote control. Again, there are three wire harness connectors. One is for the remote. Here Andrew is showing you the battery backup, which you can use in the event that you have a power outage. You will need to plug in the power cord to the battery backup box, and then obviously the wall outlet plug just plugs into a standard wall outlet. Now the trick to connecting the remote is to get the remote right through the middle of the chair. The wire is going to go through the uh, gap between the top and the bottom part of the chair. So make sure you connect the black to the black and then slide that remote through the middle. The next step is going to be to connect the yellow and gray connectors respectively. There is no trick to it. You may need to move the top part of the chair a little bit closer to you so that the, the wires can reach. But again, there's no wrong way to do it. As long as you're matching the colors up, the connectors will not fit uh, unless you have them lined up perfectly with the pins and the holes on the respective two ends. There is a little plastic black clip that secures them together when you're done connecting them. But again, the point of uh, putting the wire through the middle is so that the remote control wire can go through freely without getting pinched in any of the hardware components that actually mechanically move the chair forward and back and up and down. You'll find two sleeves, one on the right and the left side of the top part of the chair with corresponding seat posts that slide into those metal sleeves. We're going to show you how that's done, but first you're going to want to untie the wire that is used to plug the unit into the transformer box that actually delivers power to the unit and that has the battery backup 
in the event that you have a power outage, again, you can actually use the battery to get yourself back into a safe position to exit the chair. Now we're gonna connect the top part of the chair to the base. Simply find that sleeve in the seat post, get one of them in first, and then use the other right side or left side to slide it in the same way. You're gonna to wanna to give it a firm push down and listen for a click. To know that it's secure, you can try pulling up, and as long as it's not coming out when you try pulling up, the job's done. So the last part you're gonna to need to do here is take the sides of the chair. Uh, the sides are pretty much going to add a little bit of padding to the uh, back of the chair on the left and right side. They are uh, labeled number one and number two, so just make sure you have the right number two side lined up with the number two side on the side of the chair. And it's like a tongue and groove system. The rail on the chair is actually going to fit right into the rail that's part of the siding. You'll line it up and then just push down. You may need to give it a little push or bang it down with something soft like we recommend just using your hand. Don't use anything that could potentially damage the fabric. So we'll go ahead and connect the other one. As you can see, you come from the top, line up the rails. Once you get them in and they're kind of snug and locked in, you just have to slide it down. It does require a little bit of strength. As you can see, Andrew's kind of punching it down a little bit. And because he's using his hand, there's no damage being done to the chair. So at this point, the chair is pretty much fully assembled. All we need to do is give it some power and we should be able to go ahead and start raising the chair. There are two main up and down buttons on the remote control which will bring the chair to a fully elevated position. If you hold the up button, you'll see that it starts to raise itself up to the position that's gonna give you that ability to exit the chair very easily because it's tilted so far forward and the chair is tilted up so high, you barely have to use your leg muscles to get out of the chair in this position but we're showing you the chair in this position because you need to actually secure the Velcro to cover the back of the chair where all the different hardware components are exposed. So just simply line up the Velcro strip and push firmly against it. There's no really hard work here. There's no tools required. Uh, after you're done doing that, you can go ahead and begin to use the remote control to lower the chair, raise the chair. There are independent remote uh, buttons that allow you to control the headrest independently, the footrest independently, and the back of the chair independently. The main buttons will actually control the entire chair so that it raises itself all the way to the top position to exit and then to the full recline position. But there are independent control buttons to manage the back of the chair. As you're seeing here, you can tilt the back of the chair by itself and we're going to demonstrate those buttons. So the top set of buttons, the top right button is going to uh, articulate the headrest forward and you can use the top left button to retract the headrest back. Now those two buttons at the top control the headrest independently. You also have two buttons that control the lumbar support independently. It's very, very nice a feature on this chair. The Lumbar support has a great range. It goes out quite a bit. It firms itself up really nicely for those that want a chair that has a, a strong support in the lumbar area. Here we're decompressing the lumbar support. So the left button towards the top, the second from the top is gonna kind of pull it back and the right button second from the top is gonna really firm up that lumbar support and push it outwards. Now at the bottom, there are two buttons, the left one is going to be used to bring the footrests out independently, as mentioned previously, and the right one's going to be used to bring the footrest back down. So again, lots of controls, independent controls here that you can work with. There is even a option to lower the back and raise the back independently. So really whatever your comfort zone is, this chair can provide it. We absolutely recommend this chair. Again, this is a PLR 935 in the mushroom color. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.